Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about Prasarita Padottanasana, which is a wide-legged forward bending sequence that we practice in the primary series of Ashtanga Yoga. It's in the standing sequence, so right at the beginning of um, the sequence, and it's going to be one of the first postures that you ever learned if you are practicing Ashtanga. And I love this sequence because it has so many benefits and teaches you so many different movement patterns that will crop up later on in the series um, that are also really beneficial for uh, moving freely and uh, comfortably in everyday life. This posture helps to uh, stretch the inner thighs, stretch the hamstrings, stretch the back. It also helps to, in some of the versions, we're going to stretch into the shoulders and the chest. So there's lots of different stuff going on and I want to share with you all of the best tips and cues that I can think of that will help you to enjoy and appreciate this posture. Prasarita Padottanasana has four different variations and we do each of them A, B, C and D in succession um, within the standing sequence. So what it looks like is from Samastitihi, you inhale to step the right foot wide and place the hands on the hips as you draw the spine long. This is the first vinyasa, the inhale. And just notice the position of my feet to begin. We're gonna go through this in loads of detail. So my feet are relatively wide, but they're not so wide that I feel really unstable. And that's gonna be quite individual. So maybe you feel comfortable with your legs super wide. For me, I feel a little bit unsteady on my feet, a little bit unsteady in my ankles. So I prefer to have them medium width, I would say. And rather than letting your feet go out to the sides, which is a tendency that many of us have, try to turn your feet a little bit more in. So you don't want to overdo it on your first time and really try to start getting loads of internal rotation in your hips. But gradually, as you move through your practice, your, your journey of Ashtanga Yoga, start to face the feet more and more forwards. Even slightly turned in is okay as well, because internally rotating from the hip joint is going to create an easier forward bend. So I'll, I'll talk you through how that, how that is so in a, in a moment, but slight internal rotation at the hip joint will help you to fold more forwards more easily and then set your legs up with as much strength as possible and that begins at the feet. So think of actively gripping the mat with your feet and pulling energy up the legs into the pelvis. So even up the inner thighs into the pelvis and draw up the pelvic floor, flattening out and hollowing out the lower belly. So this creates a sense of connecting inwards to the center of the body into the deep uh, core area and energetically, it's going to help you stay more stable around the pelvis and in the lower spine. So drawing that energy up and find it all concentrating in the pelvis. And then for, the, for A, what we do is we exhale, fold forwards and place the hands down on the mat. Now, this first stage might present a problem to you already. If you're quite new to Ashtanga Yoga, then you might not be able to touch the floor yet. So some of the options that you can do instead would be to bend your knees and then touch the floor. And maybe your bent knees, your, your knees have to bend quite a lot in order to touch the floor, which is fine. Another option, if you wanted to keep your legs straight, would be to just hold onto the shins. So here you would just go as far down as you can whilst keeping your spine relatively flat. So from the side, perhaps, reaching the floor is looking like this. And so instead, what you can opt to do is come up here. And then you can really find length and gradually over time, as your back and your hamstrings lengthen and relax, you'll be able to place your hands down. A third option would be if you have a block or some sort of prop, you could place that just in front of you and that would effectively lift the floor up towards you. Now, the benefit of doing this is that you're learning the position of the hands and the shoulders in A, whereas here you're kind of doing a slightly different posture, but each of those variations and modifications would be fine. Let's say your hands are on the floor. 
To begin with, for A, they'll be probably a little bit in front of the feet. Um, but gradually, as you become stronger and more mobile in the posture, you would bring the hands further back until they're in line with the feet. And gradually over time, we, we take the head down between the hands. But I don't want you to think that that's the goal of the posture. The goal of the posture is really just to lengthen. So it doesn't matter if your head never touches the floor, as long as you're finding length. So let me show you how two different ways you might approach this. And I'd say one is better than the other. Let's say you're desperate to get the head down like this. Can you see how my back is rounding and I've got a lot of tension in the back of my neck, in my shoulders, and I'm not really stretching the backs of my legs either. I'm just kind of stretching my back. So what I would prefer instead is if you just come up a little bit further, maybe your head doesn't touch yet, but instead of going like this, instead you reach your chest away from your hips. So you're creating a long line along the spine. So it feels like you're going this way rather than this way. And even though that might feel a bit counterproductive at first, you're, you're just creating the length that you need in the upper and the lower back to be able to comfortably get the head down without overly rounding your back. So it will happen if you practice in this way by um, lengthening forwards. Gradually over time, you'll just be able to place your head on the floor. Okay. Now, another cue that I would like you to explore when you're practicing this posture is the weight distribution of your, in your feet. So many of us, when we are practicing, will we'll really uh, send the weight forwards in the feet. So it would look like this, or we'll do the opposite and we'll send the weight really far backwards into the heels. And what I want you to try and do is find the middle position between the ball and the heel of the foot where the weight is distributed more evenly. And that's gonna create a lot less pressure on the hamstrings. So it's the same in any forward bend. You don't wanna to be too far forwards on your toes, but you don't wanna to be too far backwards in your heels either. Try and find the weight distribution evenly and engage the feet. So press down through the bases of the big toe, connect to the outer edge of the foot, the arch, the heel, and really feel like the foot is working in the posture. It's not just a passive limb that's just kind of flopping around. You want it to create energy and lift energy up through the legs. And then finally, <laughs> I know I'm talking a lot about this posture, but these cues are gonna to apply to each of the different variations. My final tip with the, the legs is to have this idea of possibly pulling the mat apart with your feet. You can, you can do either. You could pull inwards or you can pull outwards. But for me personally, I find that engaging the outer hip by pulling out is more beneficial for me. It just feels a lot more um, stable. You might be the opposite. You might find that squeezing and pulling the feet towards each other, almost like you're pulling the mat inwards, um, might create more strength and stability. So play around with them. If neither works particularly more than the other, find a balance between the two. You should also always feel that your quads are engaged. So if my quads are just floppy, they look like that. When they're engaged, hopefully you can see the muscle becomes tense. And what that does is it actually allows the hamstrings to relax a little bit and you'll find a much more effective stretch because those muscles are antagonists. So when the quad en engages, the hamstring relaxes and vice versa. So by engaging the quad, you're actually allowing your hamstrings to stretch more effectively. Let's say you've got all of those cues down now and you're in Prasarita Padottanasana A. How to work a little deeper into the pose would be to almost drag your hands forwards along the mat. They don't actually move because they're down, but drag your hands forwards to help lengthen your spine. And you might find that it creates a bit more traction so that you can get your head down or you could get a little bit closer to the floor. Once your head is actually touching the floor, then the idea is that you're not working hard enough. So you have to then bring your feet closer together and then hopefully you can see this time, it's too far for me. I haven't got enough length to get to the floor. 
but now this would be the position that I would work in. So actually in Prasarita Padottanasana, a more advanced practitioner would bring their feet closer and closer in. This is going to challenge the hamstrings more and the inner thighs more and the back more as well. Um, so having them wider, you're obviously closer to the floor, so it's easier to get the head down, but then you challenge yourself by bringing them in. Once I could touch here, I would bring them in a touch more, and then gradually you'd basically be in your um, Padangasthasana position, but folding forwards with the head between the feet, one day maybe. <laughs> so going back to Prasarita Padottanasana A. Five breaths here, and the drishti is to the nose. Then we inhale to lift the chest. Exhale to empty. Inhale back up. Exhale there. And then the B version. All of the same cues apply for the legs. This time we're going to inhale, take the arms wide. And here I like to cue my students to really stretch the chest because why not use this breath? You can get a really nice stretching long across the chest and the pecs if you reach your arms out to the side and then exhale, take the hands to the hips. Keep the shoulders and the elbows squeezing back. And then here, again, we inhale, lengthening out the spine, lower belly strong, exhale, fold forwards, keeping the elbows and the shoulders back, taking five breaths. So this time, without the hands on the mat, you do not have any leverage to help pull you further into the posture. So in a way, this posture is um, more working on your, your mobility, on your active flexibility. So the only thing you can do to deepen the pose is to reach your chest forwards away from your hips. Reach, reach, reach. Let the movement come from the hips and stretching the back of the legs to elongate the spine. Again, the drishti is to the nose. And I like to, again, cue squeeze the elbows back towards each other slightly because this is engaging the muscles that are called rhomboids which are between the shoulder blades that help to squeeze your shoulder blades together and these are muscles that we don't often use they're, they're chronically weak in most people because we tend to walk around like this so having even just five breaths of the rhomboids squeezing back towards each other and the lats to squeeze the shoulders down, I find that this is a really good way to fire up those dormant muscles. And um, so play around with that. Don't overdo it, of course, but just a little bit of a squeeze can help to switch off, switch off the tighter muscles around the neck and switch on those weaker muscles around the shoulders. So let's say we've done five breaths. Exhale fully and then inhale all the way up, exhale there. And then the C version is probably the most, the trickiest one. So again, we inhale, take the arms wide. Or oh, find that lovely stretch in the pecs across the shoulders. And then exhale, interlace the fingers behind your back. Now here, the tendency is to do this. So in order to get the shoulders to, uh, in order to clasp the fingers together, we tend to do this because it creates more space. See, at least once you've caught the fingers behind the back, try to roll the shoulder blades back. Roll the tips of the shoulders back as well. So it's not this, it's this. So from the side, try not to let your shoulder tip roll forwards. Instead, keep it back. And guess which muscles are we're using there to do that job? Again, it's the lats to keep the shoulders down and the rhomboids to squeeze the shoulders back towards each other. Shoulder blades, I should say. So then we take a deep breath in. We draw the um, shoulders back and down, keeping the lower belly engaged. As we exhale, we fold. Now, forget about the shoulders for, to begin with. Just find that strong position with the legs. Lower belly engaged weight evenly distributed between the, the front, the, the ball of the foot and the heel. And then as you start to, uh, and then as you're feeling settled in the pose, then we start to work into the shoulders. Now, the temptation is to just try and get the hands down 
um, no matter what, no matter how it feels in the shoulders and sacrificing all of the lovely um, positioning that you've just done with the shoulders. I want you to try and forget that. Try and forget about the goal of getting the hands to the floor because really the goal is just to stretch the shoulders and do a forward bend. So what I want you to do is allow that allow the coming over the, of the hands to come from your forward bend don't let someone come and just plonk your hands down because all you're going to do there is compensate by doing this and then you lose that stretch of the shoulder and it doesn't feel good you probably have have noticed if you've had that adjustment it doesn't feel nice and there's a reason for that so forget about getting the hands down it will happen if you follow these tips so just find that position that you had at the beginning fold forwards and then keep that position but try to deepen your forward bend hopefully you can see if i were to just wrench my hands down it would look like that I've lost all of the integrity. So instead what I'm doing is reaching my hands back away from my back, trying to lengthen the arms and then just forward bending, breathing deeply and allowing that tension at the front of the chest and the shoulders to soften. You can loosen your wrists if you prefer. Some people prefer to have the hands clasped because it feels a bit more stable. Try both and see. And then inhale all the way up exhale release okay so for d d is probably my favorite one it's just nice and relaxed you've already stretched the legs um, in the previous three versions uh, so let's have a go we're going to inhale hands to the hips elbows and shoulders back exhale catch the big toes with the first two fingers inhale lengthen the spine draw in the lower belly and exhale fold forwards Gently draw the shoulders back and again, rather than getting the head down, think of reaching your chest away from your hips to lengthen the spine. The back of the neck is long, drishti is down the nose. And then here, let's have a play with that internal rotation of the legs. So when you internally rotate your thighs, internal hip rotation, you actually help the pelvis to roll forwards, which can help you to forward bend a little bit deeper. Now you don't want to overdo that motion. You don't want to go into too much of a, um, a kind of anterior pelvic tilt because uh, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. <laughs> so you want a little bit of internal rotation so that your pelvis can roll forwards. That will definitely help some of you who are feeling like this in a forward bend. So if you're feeling like you can't get that motion to let the, the hips roll forwards, then internally rotating your thighs like so. And it kind of feels like you're turning your feet, your toes in or pulling your heels out. But because the heels are on the floor, they're not gonna move. It's just gonna be a subtle pulling out motion. And that will help, hopefully you can see. So I go from here, if my feet were turned out, if I turn my feet in and tug at the heels, I can, I can roll my pelvis forwards. So have a go at that. Let's do a few more breaths in this, in this version. Lengthening the spine. One. Two. And three. Then we inhale, head up. Exhale there, inhale back up, Samastitihi. Let me just demonstrate that sequence for you all in a row so that you have the vinyasa count in your head because I know that it can be a little bit confusing with all of the inhales, the exhales. So I'm going to talk you through breath by breath and demonstrate as well so that you get the flow of that sequence. Okay, Samastitihi. Prasarita Padottanasana. Inhale, step to the right, hands on the hips. Exhale, hands between the feet. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, fold forwards. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale to empty. Inhale to standing. 
exhale there. B, inhale, arms wide. Exhale, hands to hips. Inhale, draw the spine long. Exhale, fold forwards. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale all the way up. Exhale there. Inhale, reach the arms wide, C. Exhale, interlace. Inhale, shoulders back. Exhale, fold forwards. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale all the way up. Exhale there. D. Inhale, hands on the hips. Exhale, catch the toes. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, fold. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale, head up, lengthen. Exhale to empty. Inhale to standing. Samastutihi. Okay, that was a lot for Prasarita Padottanasana. As you can tell, I've done a lot of um, experimenting and studying of this posture in my own practice and with my students as well. So I think that these tips are gonna be useful. Maybe just pick one or two today and use them in your practice. And then as you start to feel the benefits or if, if you feel that they're working for you and you've integrated them into the posture, then you could try another two tips. So just make it sustainable and try not to do everything at once. If you did find this uh, tutorial useful, then please give it a like, click the thumbs up button below. It really helps my videos to reach more of you lovely yogis. And then subscribe to my channel and click the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. Thanks again for watching everyone. Any comments, just leave them in the box below. And thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.